today we actually have some very awesome news. I'm going to be trying to condense the details of the quite extensive article by Yoshi P to the player base covering the following. The opening of the Oceanic Data Center, allowing world transfers again from different home worlds. Data Center travel is actually back on the menu. And no, I'm not trolling. It is for real back on the menu this time. Then we have the expansion of all of the regional data centers, then resuming sales to new players. And I know that's going to be a huge point. So was a heartfelt message from Yoshi P himself. Itself. So without further ado, if this video helps you or you want to help support the channel, I'd super appreciate if you drop data center travel on that like button because I really want to see so many people and can't daddy that subscribe button. So first up on the list is the Oceanian data center opening on January 25th. I hope I'm saying that right at least. But like January 25th, that's pretty wild because that's around 10 days from now, which will open up with five worlds from the start and have significant bonuses to incentivize them to travel. And one of them is going to be actually no world travel. Of course, there's going to be a bunch more, like there's going to be gill, there's going to be like um, experience bonuses, like there's just a lot of incentives to get you on the Oceanic Data Center. Likewise, the new servers, all these perks, this is going to be potentially an incredibly huge set of perks to our Australian and so many more players in the Oceanic region. The second item on the list is that world transfers are coming back on January 26th to all players in all data centers, which is like super huge the good news so so many people but hold on before you swap worlds i'd say that this was meant to actually be another video that i haven't gone to just because my real life has just been so hectic with my job and then like family health issues and ah. but i am on gilgamesh and the queues i can tell you for a fact has been my experience that they have been super short yesterday especially relative to what they used to be like we were talking about like 5k queues like a few weeks ago right now at like 5 30 p.m my time it was like around a 1000 ish queue maybe 1200 ish queue and then like any other time it's been like a queue of like 50 or so players obviously like try at different times i haven't exhaustively tried different times but i did want to get that into this video because i know a lot of people have been like um <laughs> looking at transferring immediately but yeah i'm not sure exactly what happened if there was more resources play added or players have just been finished the msq and leaving but yeah fair disclaimer is i would check your world again because i know a lot of players especially on gilgamesh have been looking to transfer so things might be a bit more palpable here going forward third on our list which is going to be a huge point that i know so many people including myself are incredibly excited for is that data center travel system is coming to 14 with a patch 6.1 x patch that x is actually going to be very important so that means that this may be patch 6.10 but it could also likely be patch 6.15 a subsequent patch prior to 6.2 let's not get our expectations too out of line here and be like oh yeah exactly when patch 6.1 is landing i'm going to be heading right to get Balmung. <laughs> is pazuzu up but similar constraints exist that we have heard in prior discussions of data center travel. You can visit other data centers in the same physical data center, which results in you being able to visit players in the same region's data center, such as if you're on North America, you can visit North American data centers, such as you can like visit Balmog from Gilgamesh, well, we're busy calling the white mages to cleanse you upon your return. They did mention that it is technically possible to implement cross-region data center travel. However, that will require further consideration on how they'd go about doing that. But the fact that they are even mentioning it actually kind of gives me hope for that. And lastly, with this point, there will be limitations beyond that, like no free company chat, no link shells, but you can do quests, duty finder will be there, and it's largely the same experience aside from that. We're already in the state, like why people want a world transfer, which was an earlier point. One of the big reasons is so that they can join a free company of a friend because right now yes if i am like on gilgamesh which of course i'd be on gilgamesh because gilgamesh is the best <laughs> we were also the best accused but um say someone had a like free company on genova and that i really wanted to join that free company i can't do that just by transferring to their world even though they're we're on the same data center so this is actually a limitation that is definitely imposed even within the same data center and so you'd need to do something like world transfer to join that free company regardless though this is going to be so healthy for rating for um erp <laughs> things as well now for the fourth big point here is the expansion of all regions data centers the servers are getting buffed boys 
<laughs> a lot, a lot of valuable details here. And so a summary is going to remove some of those very important details that some of you might find very valuable here. So an article link to this article is in the description if you want those details. But for the Japanese data centers, logical data centers are being expanded from three to four logical data centers, but the number of worlds are unchanged and not, uh, how to say it, simultaneous logins will be increased by 50,000 or more, which to say the least is kind of a terrifyingly impressive number. Beyond that, let's honestly be serious with one another here. They're just doing that to isolate Tonberry from the rest of the data center. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Oh my god, don't come at me. Ah. Now for North American data centers and servers, there are two phases planned here. The first is a logical data center that will be added initially with four new worlds on it, which will be expanded to a total of eight new worlds on the data center thereafter around August of this year. Now, in terms of larger scale picture from there, they are now considering an even bigger upgrade for next expansion 7.0 with more details to come out later, but they are considering this for next expansion, which I think is going to be a huge, huge benefit. We have seen already what Gilgamesh becomes like at the new expansion of Endwalker. Um, I look forward to this. I'm very scared of going through that again. Like, I'm not trying to have a kiki right now. What I am going to say is that when a raid member gets DC'd and it is not 11 p.m. at night in North America, <laughs> we basically had no raid night that night. Like, my first raid week was a shit show. Now, for European data centers, they are adding two new worlds to each of the currently existing data centers by July of this year. And then they are doing a second phase to add a new logical data center with eight new worlds added to it. However, they did mention that they are bracing to add floor space for a potential fourth data center for European data centers, though. And so be on the lookout for that. Now, fifthly, and most certainly not least, is have you ever heard of the critically acclaimed MMORPG, also known as... I will spare you the full meme, but the, the Fantasy 14 sales are finally back on, and so now you can bring all of your friends here. And so yeah, they're resuming the sales of Final Fantasy 14 after the astronomically successful initial launch of Endwalker, which can now be purchased on January 25th. They did, however, warn that if things go absolutely out of hand again, they will consider having to, or probably have to consider, suspending the sales again. But I can say that this is a great thing because as a creator, I cannot express the deluge of messages and questions or comments I get about people interested and are like salivating to buy and play the game. So this is actually really, really great news to a ton of people. Now, the last point that I want to touch on here is a direct apology from Yoshi P and I won't summarize it out of respect for obviously Yoshi P. Like I don't want to like summarize an apology or something like this. I'm like a heartfelt message. But as I always say, the level of communication and deep level of care and respect is the Final Fantasy. 14 advantage and it shows how respectful our devs are towards the player base which as you are witnessing firsthand is really the final fantasy 14 advantage i think a lot of us have played a lot of different games and this level of communication and upfront respectful um ways to like talk to the players is just like such a unique thing and it's such a final fantasy 14 thing and it is so important and i just love our devs so much anyhow that is it for this video Whew, i tried to condense it down to like less than five minutes and good luck on that and it is still longer than expected oops and yeah take care everyone and be well